Today we're looking at battens, or as you might know them in different states, top hat, purlin, or a supporting member as they're more accurately known in technical terms. Today I'm holding a piece of cyclonic rated metal batten. Um, it's a one millimeter batten, and so I'm using this as an example today for the discussion. So why are we talking about battens? Well, battens are usually the first thing that goes on when putting a roof on. And they're also a surprisingly large complaint item in a lot of the work I do. That's usually because uh, it's a result of people not being happy with the straightness or curvature appearance of lines, the finished product. After they've gone on and put the roof on, people complain about the straightness of lines. Also where the fixings go in the battens, people complain about if they can still see the bottom on a new house, usually you can, without ceiling, you can see the bottom. So battens are really important because that's the first part. Get them right and usually things will, will turn out okay at the end of the job. Well, what do the standards say about the battens? So we do get a lot of complaints. What do the actual standards say that the insulation side of things, how they should be? Well, before you start any job for a customer or a builder or even a subcontract arrangement, you should always have, as AS1562.1 stipulates in part 3.5, design documentation. Design documentation should include all the types of information you need about not only your roof and insulation, but your battens. How many you want? How many should be in like cyclonic areas that we have? Um, we, we, a lot of people are, you know, say you should have one 600 millimeters up in a C1 category from the bottom, 600 millimeters from the top, or three in 1200. There's all different requirements. All those things are contractual. They should be in your design documentation along with the color of the roof and everything else. First thing you should do is have that. I want to go to a lot of jobs. A lot of the time for a complaint, I get to the job. First thing I ask for is what's on the plan or what's in the design documentation and people go, oh, I don't know. Or oh, here it is, but it's been varied. There's no variation attached important have that done first if you've got your as 1562.1 standard there you can look at clause 1.3.22 it defines any batten pearl and top hat really as a support member that's the definition of it first so there can be either metal hit or timber as um you probably see when you're re-roofing a place or people use timber a lot of the time in some states for new houses too so, AS 1562, clause 4.2.1, focuses on the spans. That means the distances between the battens or purlins. So, the, the, the span is what's referred to as that distance, and it's defined at the start of the standard. So, what should be the correct span between the, uh, or the tolerance between the spans. So when you install battens or you get a batten fixer in Northern states, uh, New South Wales and Queensland, we have specific people that just do battens, install metal battens or timber. It's a proper proper um, subcontract without a job. In Tasmania, South Australia, Western Australia, Northern Territory, other states may not have those as specific or have the demand yet for a specific um, uh, subcontract area as batten fixing, but we have them already. So most people are concerned more so about the aesthetics, the straight line of the, of the battens. The standard says in clause 4.2.3 that a seven millimeter, seven millimeter uh, distance over each lineal meter is an acceptable tolerance for straightness. So that's, a, that's an acceptable standard of straightness. So seven millimeters per meter, that doesn't mean that at the first end of, of the batten of fixing between one span and another, it can be seven millimeters. Then the second meter, it can be 14. The third meter, it can be 21. No, it means that per meter, it can only be a seven millimeter tolerance. That's what it means. It also says that uh, clause 4.2.1 notes that fixings should be in the center of the supporting member or batten. It also says there is a tolerance, and we know that because screw lines can be both not straight, but also fixings can be still relatively toward the center so that means that even when you're underneath a house for example it's a new construction or a renovation and you can see underneath metal metal battens are on it's not unusual to get up on top of a roof particularly if you're marking each sheet every third or fourth sheet and then you flick lines into between every third or fourth sheet when you're screwing off 
it's not unusual to still hit the center of the baton, but get up on top and see a wavy line. Hmm, interesting. The S SAHB 39 2015 at clause 7.8.2 G and 7.83 part IV, it also says fastness should, should hit the center of the purlins. Both refer to straightness, but more so in an aesthetic form, not anything to do with the structural integrity of hitting the center. So it doesn't seem to indicate in the standards that whether you hit the top of the baton, or bottom, or anywhere in between, that is gonna affect the structural integrity of the baton, but you should try and hit the center. So after looking at those standards, and there's not a whole lot in the standards about metal battens or timber battens or fixing them or installing them in those areas. What do we get? Well, when I'm on site, usually, provided I see the fixing haven't completely missed, if they, if I can see the bottoms and they're hitting as close to the center as possible and they're not missing, then generally speaking, the standards are really more so focusing on the aesthetic and visual side of um, the screw line, not so much the um, whether it's a structural matter or not. So if I was, if I'm doing a, an inspection and there's a complaint item about a wave in the in the in, in the in the screw line, well, the wave in the screw line might be different because they may not be hitting the center. So it's not normally a, a genuine defective item, um, but aesthetics might, and that's where design documentation comes in. If it says lines are to be straight or straight as practicable, maybe you could look at it from a contract side, but as regards meeting the standards, well, they, they generally meet the standards otherwise. So thanks for your time today. We'll be looking at the installation of sheets in the next video. Thank you.